bit more. Woo! Woo! Excited to be here, cool. Um, hi, so I'm Megan. I am a software engineer at JAXTA in Sydney. Uh, and I'm here today to talk to you all about numbers in general, but also specifically in JavaScript. Um, and to have a little bit of fun with it, I'm going to put it in the context of Beyonce a little bit. Um, can I see who here is a fan of Beyonce? Can't actually see any of you, so I'm just going to assume you're all fans of Beyonce and you're going to love this talk. Um, <laughs> so I hope you are ready to learn. So let's go back to basics. What actually is a number? Well, a number is an abstract concept which we use to count, measure, label, and identify things. Um, we kind of use them every day. Um, they're a pretty familiar concept. Um, and to help us kind of group them in and understand them, we can classify them. So uh, we can group them into certain categories. So we can start off with our natural numbers, which are our positive whole numbers, integers. Um, we have integers, which is uh, negative and positive whole numbers and includes zero. We have rational numbers, which are numbers that can be expressed as fractions. Irrational numbers are numbers which cannot be expressed as fractions, um, such as pi or the square root of two. Uh, and we also have real numbers. So real numbers are a superset of all of the above categories um, and basically represent any number that you can see on the number line. Um, we also have complex numbers, transcendental numbers, imaginary, infinity and negative infinity, infinitesimals, surreal, none of which I know anything about, so <laughs> not going to go there. <laughs> um, so just as we can um, classify numbers and group them into different ways, we can also represent them in different ways. So when I talk about representation, I just mean how we communicate the numbers that we're using. Um, so in human languages, if I asked you to think of the number eight, uh, many people here would imagine the Arabic numeral eight. Um, some of us might uh, imagine Ba, the Mandarin Chinese character. Some of us might, may think of Azar, which is the Hindi um, number for eight. So all of these are actually the same thing. They're just different symbols which we use to represent the number eight. Um, and apologies if I've just like butchered the pronunciation of those. Feel free to come and correct me afterwards. Um, so just as we can represent numbers in different ways in human languages, we can also represent them in different ways in JavaScript. So in JavaScript, there are five ways that we can represent numbers. Um, we have our standard base 10. So if we imagine that number 1,234,567, uh, we can also represent that as a binary number, um, which is base 2, octal, which is base 8, hexadecimal, which is base 16. Um, you'll use that a lot if you're working with CSS as well. Um, and scientific notation. So uh, that little, so this is what we use when we are handling really large numbers. Um, and that E just means like times 10 to the power of 6 in this case. So what is a number in JavaScript? Well, just as a girl has to have her standards, so too does a programming language. Uh, and in JavaScript, we follow the IEEE -E -E 754 um, standard for floating point arithmetic. That's the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers. Um, it's a super long, really dry document. If you're having trouble sleeping, I can recommend it. Um, <laughs> it's, it's very interesting. Um, I just don't have the, uh, the ability to read that kind of document. Um, but power to you if you do. Um, but basically, it, it uh, outlines how numbers are implemented in JavaScript um, and gives us a reason why 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 does not equal 0 0.3 which is everyone's favorite JavaScript joke. <laughs> um, so the IEE 754 specifies the implementation of floating point arithmetic uh, in JavaScript, which is how we represent decimal points in binary. And it allows us to represent real numbers as an approximation to support a trade-off between range and precision. Um, so when I talk about range and precision, computers have limited space. They're not that amazing. Um, <laughs> Sorry, no offense. Um, so when I talk about range, in JavaScript, we have a range of numbers 
that's like the size of the set that we can represent. So we can represent from about negative nine quadrillion all the way up to positive nine quadrillion. So that's a pretty decent sample size. Um, and when I talk about precision, I mean in JavaScript we can represent numbers safely to 17 decimal places. Um, beyond that, it'll just get kind of wacky. Um, and because computers have limited space, we have to make a trade-off between range and precision. We can either have greater range or greater precision. We can't really have both, unfortunately. So computers are super basic. Aha, pun. Base, base two, guys. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> um, this says, hello, Singapore, in binary. Um, so regardless of how you write your number, everything in the, your computer is going to be stored in binary. It's all just ones and zeros. But we can't have decimal points in binary. Decimal coming from the word deca, meaning 10. Um, binary is base 2, so we can't really represent decimal points safely. So floating point arithmetic tries to account for that. So let's think about our number 1,234,000. 567. Underneath that is the representation of that number in binary floating point. We have 64 bits, so 64 individual digits. Um, and it's helpful to kind of think about this in terms of scientific notation, if you're already familiar with it, to break down these bits. So the first bit represents the sign. Um, if it's a zero, it's a positive number. If it's a one, it's a negative number. The next 11 bits represent the exponent, so how far along the decimal place should be. Um, in this case, it would be like six points along, six places along. Um, and we also have the significant, or mantissa, um, which actually represents the, the um, like actual digits of the number. So let's have a look, a closer look at everybody's favorite JavaScript bug. Um, when I was a kid, one of my maths teachers always used to tell me that um, calculators are never wrong, humans are. Yeah, that's all I have to say about that, Mr. Edwards. <laughs> um, so when we are representing numbers in floating point arithmetic, um, we can represent integers super easy, it's fine, the conversion to binary is totally easy. Um, but when we start representing fractions, things become a little more difficult. So if we were trying to represent, say, one-tenth in binary, binary is base two, so representing one out of ten in a system that only counts up to two is going to present some complications. Let's think about a third. When we represent a third in decimal, we, we round it. We don't say 0.33333333333333333 for the rest of our lives. We just say 0.3 or 0.33. But as anyone who's tried to like implement a three-column layout, grid layout in CSS will know, 33% times three doesn't equal 100%. It's always that pesky little 1%. Um, so our 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 problem is similar to this. If we think about 0 0.1 represented in decimal, it's easy, 0 0.1. Let's convert that to binary. Okay, that's a lot more complicated. Um, I did say that we don't have decimal points in binary. That's not a decimal point. It's a radix point, a radix binary point. Um, so it's a similar concept, but just in base two. Um, we're not going to get into that. But if you look at this um, representation, you'll see it's 0 0.000111001001000, and that repetition just keeps on going. Um, but because we only have 64 bits, we only have a certain amount of space to store this number, we have to round it at some point. And so when we take that rounded binary representation of 0 0.1 and convert it back to decimal, we get this. So that's not 0 0.1. Hence this problem. So it's a rounding error. How
how big a problem is this, really? If I was trying to measure one centimeter, and I had 0 0.16 zeros for centimeters of error, that would be 0 0.903 times as long as a glucose molecule. OK, that seems pretty tiny. Let's go bigger. If I were trying to measure a kilometer, and I had a margin of error of 0 0.1604 kilometers, that would be 0 0.210 times as long as the distance from Earth to the moon. OK, not big enough. Let's go big or go home. If I were trying to measure a light year, that's the distance that light travels in a year, and I had a margin of, zero, margin of error of 0 0.1604 light years, I'd be about 38.38 centimetres off, or about the height of a standard bowling pin. Things you learn. So in most cases, this degree of accuracy is really just not going to be that important. Um, we don't usually need to know a value to 17 decimal places. Um, if we're creating a shopping cart, for instance, does your user really need to know their cart total to 17 decimal places? No, they need to know it to like two maximum. So we can just round it. Um, and we can just round it really easily using the rounding methods inside of the maths object. So we've talked a bit about precision. Now let's move on to range. Size really does matter. In my defense, Charlie started the willy jokes yesterday, so I'm just carrying on from her work. <laughs> so I mentioned that we have a trade-off between range and precision. Um, and when I mentioned our range, I said we have a range in JavaScript of about negative 9 quadrillion through to positive 9 quadrillion. But I wasn't telling the entire truth. <laughs> Way to build trust. Cool. Um, <laughs> so if I went into my JavaScript console and I typed in 1.7 times 10 to the power of 308, I'd get that number back. So obviously I can represent that number. That's way bigger than 9 quadrillion. 9 quadrillion is only like 16 zeros, and this has 308. That's massive. Um, but if I go 1.8 to the power times 10 to the power of 308, I get infinity? I'm confused. I don't really remember that being how maths works, but OK. So JavaScript actually has a maximum value, um, and you can access that inside of the number object. And it's 1.79769, all the rest of those numbers, <laughs> times 10 to the power of 308. So that's a really big number. Um, and for really big numbers, we have naming conventions. So um, like a million, a billion, a quadrillion. Um, and those naming conventions go all the way up to a number that is followed by 303 zeros, um, which is called a centillion. So JavaScript actually exceeds naming conventions. Like, that's massive. That's huge. Um, that's a pretty good range. If you're still not convinced that that's a good range, um, 3.28 times 10 to the power of 80 is the number of particles in the universe. So if you're using any numbers bigger than that, what are you doing? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> You're going to create a black hole or something. <laughs> um, but if you are using numbers bigger than that, like tell me. I want to know what you're doing for real. <laughs> That's cool. Um, so we have no business using numbers greater than that maximum number. Um, this, is, this is fine. So we have a massive range, up to 308 zeros. Um, but we can't safely represent numbers beyond this 9 quadrillion that I keep banging on about. So in JavaScript, we have a maximum and minimum safe integer, and that's that 9 quadrillion value. But if we move beyond those values, things get a little bit weird. All right, we've got our maximum safe integer. We just pay attention to the last three digits, because the rest of it is just too much. Um, it ends in 991. All right, let's try to do some maths. All right, working so far. Um, okay, back on track. Uh, uh, um, <laughs> I don't know 
about that. <laughs> so the arithmetic just stops adding up at a certain point. <laughs> <laughs> and so this big number problem is actually what inspired this talk. Um, and now we're going to get into Beyonce, I promise. I'm sure you've all been waiting with bated breath. Um, so at work, so for a bit of context, at Jaxta, um, we're building a massive database of music credits. So you can look up your favorite song and see who wrote, produced, recorded, whatever. Um, and you can see all their names and click through whatever. So at work one day, I was working on a page. Let's say I was looking at Drunk in Love by Beyonce, which happens to be one of my favorite karaoke songs. Um, if anyone's interested later, maybe we can make it happen. Um, also, in case you didn't understand the reference of my shirt because you weren't familiar with Beyonce's discography, this is the reference. Um, yeah, Beyonce SS, it's cool. <laughs> Okay, so this is the page for Drunk in Love by Beyonce on Jaxta. Um, but you might notice something a bit weird in that uh, credits panel on the left. Is that Beyonce is both the featured artist and the main artist? Which is not really true because Jay-Z is the featured artist on that song. Um, I mean, to me, this is a feature more than a bug. But um, double Beyonce, hell yeah, cool. Um, <laughs> So I noticed that we had this duplicate data rendering on the page. Um, and Beyonce wouldn't like this, right? She'd probably want Jay-Z to be represented fairly. Um, so I checked the API response. And I saw that, yeah, we've got Beyonce and we've got Jay-Z. Those, those two things are coming through. But having a look at those IDs, if you notice the last few digits, that's not unique. <laughs> um, which is not ideal because they're clearly not the same object. Um, and so the problem here is that when we take the original IDs, which ended in 167 and 168, JavaScript was passing them incorrectly when I got them because those numbers were too large. Um, and so what was happening, because we were getting the same IDs, um, the framework that I use is Ember. Um, and Ember Data was saying, hey, I've already got a resource object with that ID. I'm not going to fetch it again. So here, have Beyonce again. <laughs> Which is, again, feature, not a bug. But um, <laughs> my boss didn't think so. Um, yeah, so as you can see, if you have IDs that are numeric and they are incrementing and they're too large, you're probably going to run into problems like this. And you're probably going to stare at your screen for like three hours going, why? <laughs> Maybe. Um, right, and so we were getting duplicate data on the page, which was not ideal. Um, something to look out for when you are handling really big numbers in API responses is that sometimes there'll be a difference between like when you open your response in a new tab versus in DevTools. Um, so when I was looking in DevTools, the IDs were exactly the same, so they were passed already. Whereas when I opened the response up in a new tab, it was the original um, ID that was 167 and 168. Um, so that's not ideal. Um, that's happening in Chrome and Safari. Um, so you get the correct unpassed integer in a new tab, but the passed integer in DevTools. Um, in Firefox, you get the passed integer in both the new tab and the DevTools. Who knows? Um, <laughs> Although in Edge, now that it's Chromium, you'll probably get the same behavior as Chrome, so um, that's cool. I don't really understand why that's happening. If anyone works on these kind of tools and can enlighten me, I would love to know why it's like different in a new tab versus in the dev tools. Um, yeah, so because we had the um, incremental numeric IDs, it was a problem. So our solution was to move to UIDs, um, which is a pretty common solution. Um, they solve a bunch of problems. Um, for us, that was primarily this problem, where uh, the numbers were too large. Um, and the funny thing was, we were actually using UIDs on like every other table. We'd just forgotten this one in the database. And it was like, uh. <laughs> um, So that was fun. <laughs> um, and so because we fixed that, now Drunk in Love appears with the correct credits for Jay-Z and Beyonce. And the king and queen are happy. 
So this just in, well, like a year ago, but this just in, um, we also have now big int, which is a new numeric primitive that was introduced about 12 months ago, um, like a week before the first time I gave this talk, and I was like, what? Oh my god, so stressful. <laughs> uh, so it is available in Chrome, Firefox 68 Beta, and Edge. Um, it became available in Firefox 68 Beta like a week ago, which was super exciting if you're a numbers nerd like me. Um, and it means we can represent numbers beyond that maximum safe integer, which is pretty exciting. Um, so we can create them by appending n to a number. Um, so we type in 100n and we receive back 100n, which is a big int. Um, we can also use the big int uh, method with a string or a number. Um, we can't use any floats because it is an integer, not a float, um, or not big int, not big decimal. Um, we can do arithmetic with other big ints, which is cool. Um, we can do adding, subtracting, multiplying. We can divide, um, but because we won't return any decimals, it will just round to zero, so 10 divided by 3 is three and a third, um, but it'll just say three. Uh, we can do this operation. I don't know what it's called, but it's like when you do something to the power of, we'll just call it to the power of. Um, and we can also do modulo, which is cool. Um, we can't do mixed type operations, so we can't add uh, 100n to 100. They're different numeric types, so um, we can't actually mix them. But we can compare them, so they have loose, com loose uh, equality to regular numbers. Um, and we can compare them like with greater than and less than. They'll compare correctly. So if we have like an array of mixed types, we can sort them, things like that. Um, now let's do some maths, like some real maths with these big numbers. So earlier we had this problem where we were adding to the maximum safe integer and everything was just really confusing and weird. Let's try that with our big num, our big integer. So I'll set a variable big num and then I'll add one. All right, cool. It works. It works. Yeah, clap for the creators of big id. <laughs> it just keeps going, it's so beautiful. Oh, I love it, I love it. <laughs> Um, yeah, so BigIn is not yet ready for production apps. Um, it's not available in all browsers, and there's not a huge amount of documentation available. But um, this is how I feel about it. Yes, numbers, big numbers, cool. Um, what I think is most exciting about this is that this problem didn't even exist when JavaScript was created, like, what, 23, 24 years ago? Um, I mean, JavaScript is kind of still like a baby in terms of what it can do, but like some babies grow up to be Beyonce, so um, maybe JavaScript will grow up to be Beyonce. Uh, but I think it's really cool that, um, you know, it's easy to get caught up in JavaScript fatigue sometimes, but I think it's really cool to um, be working in an ecosystem that is constantly evolving and growing and learning and fixing its mistakes, which is cool. So to summarize, JavaScript has some really weird number quirks, but um, when you kind of dig into them, they're not totally unreasonable. Um, I would say they are totally reasonable um, when you kind of know what's going on. So something to kind of just be aware of, I guess. Um, when you're talking about precise numbers, remember that JavaScript uses 64-bit floating points. So there are going to be precision errors when you're going any further than um, 17 decimal places, so round things. And when we're talking about really big numbers, remember that there's that maximum safe integer. Try not to go beyond it if you can, um, or have your IDs pass through as strings or different kind of types. Um, and remember that big int is coming, which is really cool. I'm excited. So I'm hoping that after this talk with Matt, you'll be a little less confused. A little more like this good boy. 
or a little less confused bee, and a little more slay. Thank you so much. <laughs>